This is right where my camera mount actually failed the last time I lost a GoPro on this road. So I'm a little bit nervous, but it's super secure on the car. Um, if you want to see uh, what happens when your camera flies off your car, check out the video. I'll put a link in it. I have had it three months. I am now at 7,600 miles on the car. I've done a few things, had a few issues, kind of wanted to talk about. For one thing, I've now officially been past the first oil change, other than the 500 mile. So I, I'm already way past that. I did that about a month ago. Everything went fine, no issues. Um, I ended up, if you know from my other video, my windshield was cracked. Uh, I hit a rock, uh, unfortunately, it just is what it is. Uh, it took about a month to get the glass in. I was hoping to make a video about it, but the glass guy was a little bit nervous about being filmed, even after I offered to pay him a little bit extra to do it, because that would be a fun video to see the glass come apart. But, you know, at the end of the day, I didn't want to stress the guy out. So I decided not to do a video, and I think he was happier. So I got the windshield replaced. Um, ended up being most of a morning. It was about a two hour job. It's kind of crazy how much stuff you got to get on and off this car to be able to get the glass out and I'm sure I'll see it again. Um, they mostly got everything exactly where it needs to be. There's one tiny little thing where my mirror button isn't sitting exactly flat, but I'm not 100% sure the car wasn't like that beforehand. Anyway, it's not a big deal. I can live with it. Other than that, it was a pretty simple job. They got it, or pretty, they did a really good job. Got the glass in and out. Love my new glass. It was OEM glass from the factory. Uh, that was one of the things I was insistent on and luckily they were able to help me out with. So I got that done. Uh, the only other real problem I'm having with the car after this many miles is I do have an issue with the stereo. Um, it seems to basically cut out. Uh, I've actually got some footage. I'm gonna go ahead and let's, uh, let's take a look at what it looks like when it does that. Stop at a light so I can actually catch this. So here's the problem. You can see the, there's no audio, there's no sound. You can't even see the audio going up. The XM buttons disappear. That's kind of the clue that you have a problem. Um, it does it when my phone is plugged in or straight through the stereo. This morning it did it to me with the with it, it plugged in. Uh, right now it's doing it with the XM, it just locks up and stops. Oh, Minutes later it so pops right back on. It seems to be working okay. Oh, oh, and there it went away again. Yeah, so something's not right. Oh, it's coming back. every weekday 4 p.m. This is, I mean, I talk about this in stand-up, but, you know, I, I never saw it. So you can see there kind of what it does. Basically, the, the stereo completely cuts in and out. You can't hear or see anything. It's super frustrating. Um, restarting the car doesn't fix it. Uh, maybe pulling the battery does. I don't know. I haven't done that yet. The real issue is it seems to come and go. It did it to me about a month ago for a couple of days and then it stopped and I kind of forgot about it. And then there was a couple software updates to my phone and I thought it might've been phone related, um, but it did it again. And actually it's been, it's done it when I've only been listening to Sirius, haven't even had the phone connected to the car uh, through CarPlay and it's doing it. So unfortunately I think it's kind of something to, something to do with the, the car itself. So luckily I got it on film as you saw, so I'm, I need to call the dealer and talk to them and see if it's something, maybe I need a new head unit or maybe there's something they can flash on the car. I've been checking the bulletins to see if there's something that comes up, but unfortunately I can't find anything. So that's something that I need to get addressed. Other than the windshield and this one little issue with the sound, that's about the only issue I've had. Um, the car has some creaks to it, which are, I'm not really surprised. Uh, more than I'd like, but it's a Corvette, it's not a Porsche, so the build quality is not as nice as you feel like it should be on a $60,000 car, but at the end of the day, it's not why I bought the car. I can live with it. Plus, to be fair, I do have a Z51 suspension. I don't have the mag ride, so it's a pretty stiff ride, and as you can see on these roads I'm driving on, I live near in a kind of a more rural area. The roads can be kind of rough did scare the hell out of myself one day. I accidentally turned the brightness, I don't know how I did this, all the way down on the car. And uh, when you do that, it, um, it actually, uh, <laughs> it looks like the dash is dead. So it was because when you're out bright sun, so I thought my dash was dead. I was like, oh my God, I was panicking, but I could barely see it. And luckily it, my brain figured it out after a couple of minutes. 
Um, after three months, I still do not regret doing it as a daily driver. I'm still okay with how I got rid of the Mustang, how I'm putting the miles on the car. You know, I've seen a couple of rock chips. I've got a few in my, you know, on the front kind of splitter section. Uh, I've actually got some, a very tiny one on my spoiler. You know, I mean, it's just, it's the price of driving the thing every day. But to me, the, 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 the juice is worth the squeeze. You know, I get some damage on the car just from it being used, but the fact is I get to drive it every day. I get to, when I get off work, I get to pop the top off and drive this thing home. So to me, it's totally worth it, you know, and I get that most vet drivers, it's not like that. Um, you know, it's especially if it's one of those things you've been saving for forever and you just buy it as a retirement thing and you want to baby it, I get it. Uh, but to me, the, the joy of this kind of vehicle is actually driving it. I've taken the car on a few uh, little day trips, which has been fun. Yeah, this road's like way worse. That road used to be a road and it's not. This car is a fantastic grand touring car. Uh, it's great for me and what I like, but my wife loves getting in the car and she's even become quite a fan of popping the top off. So we've, uh, we've taken quite a few little trips. That's one of the things that's helped up the mileage is the car doesn't sit on the weekends either. It drives on the weekdays and it drives on the weekends. So what's the next step for the car? Well, the next step is I want to do a start doing a couple of light modifications. It's a daily driver, so I don't want to get too crazy. Um, I have a neighbor who has a completely built Stingray. He's got a 14 where he did a full on top end build. It's, it's absolutely insane. It's got 25 grand in, in modifications, but it's just a beast. But I want to do a couple of light things to the car. I'd like to get the Z06 uh, front grill. Uh, it just looks cool, frankly. Just a little more aggressive. Uh, and I'd also like to do an exhaust. I'm still not 100% decided on which one I want to do. Uh, I'd like to start hearing some of it in person. I'm kind of stuck between the Borla and the Corsa. I know I want to do a black exhaust. Uh, third option, because primarily I really want to black out the exhaust. Uh, but I may end up just getting my exhaust powder coated or buying another pair of stock Z51 um, mufflers and tips, getting them powder coated, swapping them out, and then just selling what's on the car. But well, I don't think I'm gonna do that. To me, it sounds if you're gonna go through the effort of doing it, you might as well do it right, so to speak. But I am pretty happy with the sound. I just like it a little more aggressive. So I'm thinking, what you know, one of the the level twos, whatever they call them, for either Borla or Corsa. I'm leaning towards Corsa because I really like the polygon style that they have. I think it actually fits the design of the car better because it's angular instead of they're kind of. Um, I don't know how to describe them. It's their polygon shape. They're not square. They're kind of trapezoidal, uh, but it's better than I think the the circular tips on for this car. 